Well, um, now we've done some cool things in Haskell, let's do some cool things to Haskell. And to contextualize this, um, let me introduce two of my co-authors, Stephanie and Richard. In a typical argument about, um, a typical discussion about, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I gave it already. Um, yeah, so in a typical discussion about Haskell, you will usually encounter the following argument. Stephanie is going to say that, you know, Haskell type system is really great. We already have dependent types in Haskell, that's awesome. To which Richard would reply, nah, not really. <laughs> um, you know, adding that uh, you have to look up the theory in like five different papers, um, that it's not very convenient to use many ca in many cases, and that he hates singletons. Although, for the record, he wrote them. <laughs> um, so in the following, I'd like to disagree with Stephanie. I don't think we already have dependent types in Haskell. You could argue that maybe we have dependent-ish types, as in we have some aspects of dependent types. But I don't think we already have dependent types in Haskell. As for Richard, well, I agree with his statement about the current state of GHC. But, you know, in the future, I'd like him to be really proud about the, about the state of um, of the design. I'd like him to be like, yeah, it's great. We have a clean specification. Um, we have uh, full dependent types, obviously. Is and the microphone working? Uh, check. Yep. No, but it's... No, it's point, point it at your mouth. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> it's already pointing. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Is it better? I'm going to try to speak out. Um, and... You know, and also uh, that we, that, so I'd like him to be like, yeah, we have full spectrum dependent types, a really clean specification, and that they're easy to program in. And the work we, I'm going to present here, uh, in, in this work, we aim to do just that. So in particular, we introduce, we, you know, we study what it means to have uh, dependent types in Haskell, what kind of semantics we can give them. Um, we also introduce a replacement for GHC's internal language that supports full dependent types. We also introduce, aside from that, a high-level theory that allows us to specify clearly what kind of type features we have. And finally, we have a full mechanization um, of type safety and of other important properties I'll come to so that we can have rock-solid confidence in our results. So, about this claim uh, that Haskell is maybe already dependent. Let's have a look at the example I hope you guys are all waiting for, vectors. <laughs> so, <laughs> great. Um, so here's what they look like in Haskell, and here Stephanie is right. Uh, you can actually write that code in Haskell already. Uh, you may need a few type extensions, but essentially you can. But there are some functions you want to write on that type that you cannot write. Here is the very applicable function. What, what does it do? Well, it takes a size as input, as well as an element, and it's going to replicate that element in a vector of the size you've specified. Here is how we want to write it. Um, aside from the fact that it's dependently typed, it's a fairly simple recursive function. Uh, it should be very similar to the list one. Um, but notice, uh, to understand where things break right now, let's have a look at this n over here. In particular, n appears in the return type of the function. Um, and in current GHC, everything that is a type or that appears in a type has to be erased. That is, we have to get rid of it for, um, during compilation. compilation. Um, but the problem is that n is actually very important at runtime. We're making a, a decision based on it. You know, we pattern match on it, and either we stop the recursion here or we keep going. So we just cannot get rid of it. And that's the reason why in current GHC you cannot type check this code. You may be able to encode it in some other way, but you cannot type check it this way. And so, in dependent Haskell on the other, way, on the other hand, we don't force you to get rid of all the types. You can keep the ones you need to keep. Um, you can compute some types too. Uh, and this is why, of course, we, want, we can actually type check this code um, in dependent Haskell. Now, you might wonder, you know, can you use some existing theory to base your theory on uh, to have dependent types in Haskell? 
Well, you know, for instance, couldn't you use maybe Martinlev? Well, we can't, because Martinlev assumes that we have a terminating language. The same way we couldn't base it, for instance, on Agda's type theory, even though Agda has some similarities um, with Haskell. Um, and so, essentially, we have the map here. We, there's n as far as we know, there's no other type theory that has all the features we need for dependent Haskell. Um, let's just have a look at some code where, Haskell, where dependent Haskell might differ from other theory you may know. Um, you might remember that in Haskell, you can write infinite natural numbers, like inf. Um, inf is just its own successor. You can also write some infinite lists in pretty much the same way. And this is important because there's many programming techniques that are based um, on infinite lists, lists in Haskell. Well, the same way that you want to have infinite lists, you may want to have infinite vectors. And you can. Here is vinf. Uh, vinf is defined as being its own cons. Um, for the sake of example, I've used two here, but you could imagine a more interesting recursion scheme to suit your needs. Um, and you know, it's really, it's really great because now you have a list that actually says that it's infinite. But notice that there's something more going on here. Um, by recursion, vinf here has to have type vec of inf. But then, because cons keeps track of the length of our vectors, then that entire expression has type vec of s of inf. And uh, if we want to be able to type check this definition, well, we need the type of the expression here to be equal to the type that we've declared. Um, and so since they're not syntactically equal, we need to use some information about inf to be able to type check this. So it's this cool thing where you have recursion both at the term level and at the type level. Uh, you may wonder, wait, but we can probably do that with coinduction. Well, but notice here that you don't have to assign uh, a side to vec. You don't have to say it's an inductive type. You don't have to say it's a co-inductive type. And actually, if you want to write other types that are not even positive, you can. So what is our map for this work? Well, to understand this, um, let's just have a look first at how current GHC works. I'm going to introduce that language, IH, um, for idealized Haskell. Um, why do we want to introduce a language like that? Well, um, it's just for the purpose of this talk to understand the, uh, to have a better view, basically, of the specificational, of the, sorry, let me backtrack, to have a clear specification of the computational behavior of Haskell terms, and also, and also of their type features. Uh, how do we do that? We get rid of all the real world features of Haskell, like type inference, and in particular, um, type inference, type classes. In particular, type inference. Why? Because type inference is a complicated beast. Um, we, we just don't want to deal with it in this one. So we'll just assume that we have an oracle for type inference here. Um, how do we define that language, IH? Well, we're going to take system f omega with gadgets. And in particular, implicit system f omega. Why? Well, because we don't want any annotation that gets in the way of the computation. But since we don't have any type annotations, well, we have undecidable type checking. Um, and, more than, and more than that, it's actually, it's a, it's a language that's completely intractable to use in GHC, for instance. This is why you may never have heard of that language um, in that context. But you may have heard about system FC, or maybe it's core implement, it's, sorry, it's GHC implementation, core. Um, so what is FC? Essentially, it's a reified IH. It's a it's an language IH with enough, enough type annotations so that we can have decidable type checking. Uh, and in particular, you can annotate any IH term to an FC term by just adding all the annotations that are required. And conversely, you can get rid of all these annotations um, and get back an IH term. Um, just briefly on the features of FC, so as I said, it's an explicit IH. That is, you can think of any term in FC as the, um, the encoding of a type derivation of an IH term. And for this, we need some annotation, type annotations first. Uh, we need annotations in particular on the lambdas, um, explicit type applications as well. We also need things about type equality, and in particular, coercions. 
A coercion is a witness for a type equality that we use, for instance, for cast, uh, to cast terms. Uh, thanks to all these annotations, it has a completely trivial syntax-directed type checking. And uh, it's also implemented. And what's, what, uh, what we need to note here is that core is actually really close to the theory of FC defined in the various FC papers. So uh, this is a very practical type system. Now, so if we want to extend uh, GHC with dependent types, well, first, we need an implementation-oriented language, right? Because we, we need to replace FC or core, more exactly, with something. So this is our first contribution, DC, system DC. Um, essentially, think of DC as being FC with dependent types. Um, just to compare briefly, so yes, of course, DC has more powerful types than FC, as, than FC has, but otherwise, it has very similar uh, characteristics. It is explicit with the same kind of annotations that we have in FC. Um, it has a trivial syntax-directed type checking again. And we've designed, it, we've designed it to be as close as possible to an actual implementation. But there's a problem with that. What is it? Well, system DC is complicated. Here's a typing rule of DC. Here's another typing rule of DC. Here's another typing rule of DC. Do you want to work with that language? No, you don't. <laughs> and in particular, when we work with DC alone, it's really tedious to know if it's correct. And by correct, I mean we need, to, we need it to have type soundness, um, to have erasable corrosions, and decidable type checking. And another big problem is that when we have, when we are facing um, a, a design choice, how do we know that it matters? You know, if I change this rule, is it going to change the expressiveness of my language? Am I going to change what Haskell program you can write? Or, you know, am I just pushing annotations here and there, but not really changing the type system? So what do we do about that? Well, we're going to introduce a language that you do want to work with. Here is system D. So as before, you can think of system D as IH with dependent types. The big difference, though, is that IH wasn't really part of previous FC work, but D is a prominent feature, as a prominent contribution of our work. Um, early, same way than before, you can annotate any D term to a DC term uh, by adding you know, all the annotations that are required. And conversely, you can erase all these annotations and get back a D term. Um, quick comparison as before, again, D has a more powerful type system than H, but aside from that, it has very similar characteristics. Um, it's essentially a stripped down dependent Haskell. Uh, it is implicit. And surprise, it has undecidable type checking. Who would have thought? Well, let's just go briefly over systemd so to see the, how it might differ from other languages you may know. So it's an unusual combination of features Somewhat un unusual, sorry. Um, it has dependent types, as we've seen. Um, it has non-termination, but it also has irrelevant arguments. Um, this is useful, for instance, for polymorphism. And it has coercion abstraction. That is, you can abstract over a given type equality directly in the language. And let's see this last point. Um, let's assume that we want to write a type derivation in D. For the context, we're just going to assume that we have some function g from ints to ints. Um, so we need to uh, fill this blank with a term so that it has this type. This type says, well, introduce an n, introduce an equal, also assume that we have an equality between g of n and 7, um, then introduce a vector of size g of n and return a vector of size 7. How do we, how do, we do that in D? Well, very directly, this way. We just introduce the n. We introduce c, which stands for the equality between g of n and 7. We introduce v, our vector, and we just return v. But notice that there's something fishy going on here. Because when we introduce v, we introduce it with, uh, as, a, as a vector of size g of n. But when we return it, it, has, it is a vector of size 7. So it just changed type on us. 
Um, and for that, we can implicitly use C, our coercion, to cast V. Um, how do we do that? Thanks to the conversion rule. It should look similar to rules uh, you may know for other languages. So that is, assume that you have a term of a certain type, assume that you can also show the equality of that type with another one, and you can return that type, uh, that term, sorry, with this new type. The big difference here is on this line. Here you can use gamma to prove the definitional, the judgmental equality between type A and type B. Uh, and in particular, C is in gamma here. So you can use C to prove that equality. And you can do so with the, assi the assumption rule, sorry. Um, so it just says, well, if you've assumed a coercion in your context, then you can use that coercion to prove the equality that it stands for. Um, you have more details about this type theory in the paper. Let's just annotate this term now so that you can get to know DC a little better. Um, so here's the same term just laid out vertically. And when we annotate it, it gives this. So as I said earlier, we need to annotate the lambdas first with the types. Then we also need to make clear things that are related to type equalities uh, or term equalities here. Um, so here we have to say what equality C stands for. And then we have to make the cast very explicit. And in particular, we have to make the coercion we're using for the cast very explicit. And if you wonder, that big coercion uh, proves this equality. Um, and now let me touch on the mechanization quickly. So we've done everything in Coq. Um, it's a fairly large development. Here are some specs about it. We've proven all the results we need for this. Um, but, you know, there's there's one, essentially one point I'd like to make here, um, which is, you know, it, this one wasn't an afterthought. We actually mechanized the system when we were designing it. Uh, and this allowed us to actually get, you know, get rid of some bugs we had in earlier designed, designs. And I think that now mechanization frameworks have come to a point where they critically enable the, th the study of theories that may be large, complex, intricate, but that are interesting. Um, tool support is absolutely essential for this. Uh, we've used uh, odd ln gen. Odd allows us to specify the language we want, and ln gen to, derives, to derive many lemmas, um, many helper lemmas for our representation. Um, briefly, where are we right now? We're working on um, adding dependent pattern matching to the language so that we can fully support dependent data types. We're also working on some more real-world features, like roles. Um, it's a technical but important feature for GHC. Um, and of course, once we have that big theory fully mechanized, well, we need to implement this in GHC so that you guys can play around with it. Um, so to conclude, here's what we've done in this work. So we have this high-level language, D, that really specifies what kind of type system we have. Then we have DC, which is a reified D, which is a language made to be tractable for GHC. And finally, we've mechanized all the properties that we need for that theory. Uh, I'm just going to leave you with the URL for the project. Um, if, you're, if you like Gok and want to um, maybe add a new feature or give us some feedback about the development, please do so. Thank you. <laughs>